so the last player that we're going to talk about today, um, man, this dude lit it up at the uh, East West Shrine Bowl. Was actually the MVP of the Shrine Bowl game. Ivy League guy from a uh, Brown, um, EJ Perry, quarterback, six two two ten. Um, in 10 games this season, 3,034 passing yards, 23 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Now, like I said, man, lit it up at, this, uh, at the Shrine Bowl was a, a big reason why his team actually almost won the game. They were down like three scores at one point until he got yeah. in. Um, when I watch EJ, though, <clears throat> I think that he is very, very competitive. I think he's a gamer to the true nature of that name. Um I really think he trusts his ability. It sometimes it's to a fault, and I think that's why his interceptions were. Picks. Yeah, I think that's why his interceptions were as high as they were. But that's also a product of the talent that was around him. He didn't have a go-to guy. He didn't have a dog out there a receiver, and it was replicate. I mean, it was um, reflected when you look at his stats. I mean, some of these games, you know, he's thirty for fifty, but he's hitting ten plus different receivers. It's like, bro. This is crazy. I didn't know you had 10 people that could catch on your team right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like that's, you know, that's the type of guy that he is. I think that he's very good with his mechanics, though. Um, you watch him in the pocket. Footwork, always good. Eyes always downfield. And his release point when he's throwing that ball is very, very consistent. It looks pro ready in that vein. We know he's a smart guy. He's an Ivy League guy. Last Ivy League guy I played with, still playing in the league. Shout out to Ryan Fitzpatrick, baby. Hey, let's go. But I also think that, you know, the thing that really separates him from some of these uh, other smaller school quarterbacks or some of these mid-tier guys that we've been discussing is his accuracy and ball placement. You yeah. watch him when he throws that ball. Not only is he accurate in terms of who he's trying to hit, but the ball placement is always where it needs to be. It's very, very consistent. And at times, he's displayed NFL level, like elite arm strength at times. You watch him in that shrine ball. Man, he has a throw. That left hash, outside numbers, 20 yards, defender draped on a rope, hits the receiver yeah. in stride in his hands. It made me jump out my seat, dude. I was like, whoa, <laughs> because you just like watching him in, you know, his regular games. You don't really see a lot of that. But part of it is because he doesn't have the athletes around him to even run routes like that. But you would see flashes of it. But then you see in that game, I'm like, dude, that throw, that that is high level. That's elite arm talent. If you can make that throw like that. But the question is, is that an outlier? Is that really in his tool bag? And that's the part where it's like you really don't know because I guess I just didn't see a lot of that. But he's definitely a dude, man, that <laughs> I mean, if we're comparing him to like your, your Doug Hodges, um, Bailey Zappies, those oh, caliber yeah. guys, like I like him over I'm them because I, I do think he's a more accurate more polished version i think that you know even if he is a undrafted guy or even if he's a, a seventh round flyer i think that man he still comes in and he gives you something to at least feel a little bit good about like man think duck for crying out loud came in and won us games duck beat out mason rudolph for how many weeks to, uh, when he was out here and i do think that ej is a better version of that i think that he also has sneaky mobility you watch him in the pocket oh, yeah he, he can escape. He can run. He's tough. Like, yeah, I do like him a lot, man. I thought that he does some good things, man. And like I said, for me, those more so just the ball placement and accuracy, because if you're not going to have the prototypical size, I need to see you be able to have another defining characteristic. And his the accuracy on ball placement is that the mobility is good. It's not great. It's not going to wow you, but he definitely moved. I think he moved good better enough. than Mason and Haskins. Yeah. So for me. I definitely think that, you know, he's he's a later round guy, like I said, seventh or undrafted guy. But it wouldn't surprise me if he comes and he's on your practice squad and then, you know, something happens. You're in a bind and he has to come in there for a game or two. I think that he is that type of guy that could still steal you a game or two if you needed him. Almost like a Tyler Heineke. Uh, he's another guy that came up to me, you know, when I think of uh, when I think of EJ. Yeah. And he's actually mm -hmm. been a halfway decent starter. Like, yes. Yeah. I don't know if you want him long term, but he's kind of like a gap quarterback for Washington well, right now. Think, I mean, they are looking; they obviously are looking for a quarterback this offseason. But, but, but that's the what I'm saying is like he's not terrible. Gonna, yeah, and Washington is still deciding if they want to even pay Tyler because Tyler has shown. I mean, even in the playoffs, remember he went to head to head with Tom Brady a year ago, and he looked good. He was he was having yeah. dudes right in the moment. So he was another small school guy from ODU. So when you think about EJ, and these are his type of player comps. It's not something that it just, you know, you turn your nose up. And it's like, no, these dudes are still good in some route or in some right. And if that's, you know, what you get out of a late round pick or an undrafted guy, 
then yeah, that's not a bad thing at all. And compared to these other quarterbacks that mm -hmm. people have gone later, maybe yeah. you look at the rankings. Mm -hmm. I think they have Zappy. Oh yeah. man, where do they have him at? They have him in like fifth round range, mm -hmm. between fifth to seventh. Yeah. I think after after you're like top six or seven, then you have yeah. Zappy. There's like mm -hmm. a drop off, I think. It definitely Dude, is. I would have this guy in that mix over Zappy. I do. Because I, I, I like mm -hmm. his size better. Uh, I think he's got better arm strength and mm -hmm. then also faster. We yeah. see the mobility. We see the rushing yards, the touchdowns there. And even what he was doing in the Shrine Bowl to get yeah. them back in the game, like that was needed, some of that mobility. And, and that was versus better competition because that was the question, right? Can EJ do this against better competition, not Ivy League guys? Because you watch him versus the Ivy League guys, and it's like – that those guys aren't playing on Sundays, but the Shrine Bowl was a good barometer, and he passed that test. Whereas Bailey Zappi in the Senior Bowl, remember, we felt very different leaving the Senior Bowl after watching him. We were like, man, he kind of struggled a little bit, you know? It wasn't yeah. as good as we thought it would be versus the better competition. So for me, that's another reason why I really lean a little bit more to EJ over a Bailey Zappi right now, because when we saw both of those guys versus legitimate competition, one rose to the occasion and the other one kind of faltered a little bit. I feel like we should be scouts, man. Hey, man. <laughs> you know, maybe one day we will, man. You know, listen, man. We, we'll what I'm ahead. saying is I would be interested to see how this draft board plays out because yeah. I don't think there's any way you could watch Bailey Zappi. And now you could look at the numbers mm -hmm. yeah. and say, oh, man, yeah, you I think numbers, he's yeah. a better mm -hmm. flyer to take in the fourth mm -hmm. and fifth round over a dude like EJ Perry. Yeah. I don't think there's any way. Right. Unless you, like you said, unless you're just solely looking at the numbers and saying, hey, this number is crazy. He played at, you know, Western Kentucky. Yeah, the, the system that That's he had it. in Western yeah. Kentucky, those gaudy That's numbers it. and stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. bro, I don't know. EJ Perry looks like he translated mm -hmm. a lot better to the pros. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And like I said, man, I just love the consistency with his footwork. I love the consistency with his footwork, his arm release, and his eyes are always downfield. I think he sees the field really well. And that's a huge benefit, a huge asset for him, man. The question is, though, who sent in the EJ Perry suggestion? Bruh. <laughs> hey, I ain't going to lie, man. It had to have been him. It was either him or a family I, I, member. I, I, I got to look at the email again, bro. It might have said EJ Perry dot, EJ Perry at gmail.com. It might have been. He's like, yo, I, need to, way, my, I need to get on the radio a little bit more. If it is, is you know what? You want to get your buzz out there? You want to get some hype out there? I don't blame you. You got to believe in fool, yourself. bro. You a fool. Look. It, it killed me because when I went to even try to like find like actual game tape, not highlights of, I'm like, dude, this film just looked rough. Like to watch, I'm like, yo, I believe y'all couldn't get no no HD camera up there. Bro. <laughs> I feel like I'm looking at the old school VHS watching the uh, the film, man. <laughs> but I no, think there's some good comps too. Heineke. I mean, yeah. I obviously have Fitzpatrick being an yeah. Ivy League guy. Right, but and especially looking back at his numbers, he, he's the high end, high end of the Ivy League guys, though, to me. Right. Yeah. Looking back on his numbers, mm. they weren't gaudy at all. Mm, not at all. His team did really well, mm. so I don't think yeah. it, EJ Perry's mm. numbers got to be extremely gaudy because, as you yeah. mentioned, the the talent around him. Mm -hmm. But maybe just clean up the picks. But you could see yeah. the arm talent being there. Mm -hmm. You could see the speed, like you said, with the yeah. dropbacks, the feet, his eyes, like all that stuff's there. You, I mean, we're and, and I we're breaking think, all this down. It's like what are yeah. what are the like big negatives right now? It's just really right. a competition. Absolutely, competition. And he's six two. He's a shorter quarterback. That's that's the big part for me. But I could easily see, like you said, man, him with better talent around him, him with the actual guy at receiver. Like, yeah, I think that he's going to be able to utilize that way more than him having to force the ball in certain situations because he doesn't have elite talent around him while he was at Brown. That's that's why I think the interceptions were what they were for him. 